on VRS TV, we're going to go over a handful of testing methods and kits. The variety and quality of the available test kits has really changed over the last few years. Today, we're going to try out an alkalinity and phosphate test kit from a few different vendors. Reed, what are you looking for when you choose a test kit? Well, I want something that's going to be reliable and affordable, but most important to me, it's got to be easy to read. Uh, if I can't read the results, it's just going to be a waste of money and I'm most likely not going to use it. Very true. I think most of us have had a shelf full of expired test kits at one point or another. And the ones that are really covered in dust are the ones that are impossible to read or a complete pain in the butt to do. Well, let's start off with the alkalinity test kits. We have the Red Sea, the Salford, and the Hannah Checker. For years I've used the Salford pretty religiously because it's pretty easy to use. The Sally Ford test kit is pretty easy to do. We'll go ahead and go through one real quick here. So I have the kit here ready to do, and we have some water from the tank here. First step is to take some of the water out, put it in our sample vial, and then add the indicator drops. Swirl it around. And then we're going to use our titrate solution here to find out what the alkalinity is. We'll slowly drip it in until the water changes to a orange or pink color. And there we are. Then we'll just take and read how much reagent we have left, put it on the chart, and we have our alkalinity. As you can see, it was pretty easy to read and easy to do. Salford has been pretty reliable for me. The only complaint I can think of is the paper instructions and the cardboard box aren't really meant to be around water at all. So by the time I'm done using the test kit, it's pretty much falling apart. That's actually one of the things I really liked about the Red Sea test kit is it comes in a hard plastic shell with a laminated instruction card, which is obviously designed to be around water. But the thing I really liked was the included titrator. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and get us ready to do a test with the Red Sea Alkalinity Pro. All right, so I got the test kit set up here. This is the hard shell that I was talking about, as well as the laminated instruction card, which uh, can get wet without a lot of harm. And this is the titrator that I'm going to show you in about three seconds. So we'll take our sample water and put it in the jar. And the reagent already has a pH indicating dye in it, so we won't have to put the drops in there. We'll just screw this contraption right on. And now we have a, a nice little thing with our syringe in it, and we can titrate it with one hand and stir at the same time, which is really nice. We're looking for a blue color to change to a reddish orange color. And there we are. So we hit the end of it and we can look and see exactly what our alkalinity is. So one of the things I really like about this is the entire thing just feels that it was put together really well and polished. The titrator is definitely a nice feature to the kit. All the components found in the Red Sea test kit are pretty polished and above the standards found at most other aquarium test kits available. At first glance, it does seem to be quite a bit more expensive because of these parts, but once you do the math, it ends up being cheaper. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing when I was first introduced to these test kits, and individually, each one is more expensive than most other test kits out there. However, what they do here is sell combo test kits. So, for instance, this one has calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium all in one and is actually cheaper than purchasing those individually from most other test kit manufacturers. And on top of that, because all the components here are made to stand up to time, like the case and the titrator and the jar, they actually sell reagent refill kits like this one, which are actually cheaper than the individual test kits from other manufacturers. So in the long run, it's going to save you money. One of the first things I noticed when I looked at this reagent refill is that it does exactly 75 tests, which is a little odd because I'm used to these ranges like 100 to 200 that this Alleyford had. 
Uh, and the reason for that is it has exactly 75 milliliters of titrin in there, which means that, that we can do 75 full test kits and actually have some left over. So if you wanted to squirt the leftover back in there, you'd probably have more than 75. And uh, I did do the math on the 100 to 200 on the Sally Furt version. And I guess it was accurate, but at standard reef tank alkalinities, you're going to get much closer to 75 as well. So, frankly, the kind of honesty that was on this packaging is something that I appreciated. Okay, Ryan, before you get too excited about the Red Sea, we have one more test kit to go over. We have the Hannah Checkers. They're quite a bit more expensive, but let's be honest, what's better than a digital readout? Okay, Reid, when you're right, you're right. Let's clean this up and uh, demo one of the HANA checkers. All right, so we have our HANA alkalinity checker here. Process is pretty simple. We're just going to take the 10 milliliters of sample water that I took out, put it in our checker, and push the button. Now it's going to read the clarity of the water to begin with so we can get an accurate reading once we add the reagent to it. So we'll just let it go. It usually takes about 15 seconds or so. It already says C2 here, so we'll take it out and we'll add one milliliter of our reagent. It's nice that we don't actually have to drip the reagent in. We can just go ahead and squirt it right in. And it says to invert it five times before we put it back in the checker. Put it in the checker and push the button and in just a few seconds we'll have our alkalinity. We already have it there, it's in a nice digital readout and we can use our chart to find out exactly what it is. Okay, now we'll move on to the phosphate test kit. I gotta say I have a special kind of hatred for phosphate tests. If I didn't have to read another shade of blue in my entire life, I'd be very happy. I agree. Really, the phosphate test kits are one of those test kits that sit on my shelf, collect dust, and expire because, frankly, they're so hard to read, they're almost not worth doing at all. Um, historically, I used to use this Sally Fur test kit, which I felt was one of the better ones in this price range, but really, it was kind of hard to read. We're going to go ahead and set it up, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so we have our test kit ready to go here. What we're going to do is add... Uh, four drops to our sample of tank water. And then it says swirl for about 10 seconds. So we'll gently swirl it, try to get it incorporated into our tank sample pretty well. And then we're going to take one scoop of the powder and add that to the sample and then it asks you to swirl for 30 seconds. Okay, so after 30 seconds of swirling, we'll just place it on the top of our color comparison chart and try to figure out which shade of light blue it is. I can tell you already, uh, I really am not sure which one this is. Really the zero <laughs> 0 0.03, 0 0.1, and 0 0.5 are, you know, they look a lot different on the card, but it's really hard to tell the difference when you're looking down through the sample. So for me, this is the reason why this test kit tends to collect dust on my shelf. And as much as I'd like to know what my phosphate levels are so I can keep algae down and coral growth up, I just uh, didn't get what I needed out of this one. So now we've seen the Salford phosphate test kit, let's go ahead and try that Red Sea one out. Okay, Reed, I'll get it set up and we'll be back in just a second. All right, so we have our Red Sea test kit here. Uh, it's still a color comparison test kit. However, they've utilized some features from more expensive lab grade type test kits, like this uh, color comparison wheel. What that's gonna do is we'll take a sample of water from our tank and we'll put it in. Then we'll spin the wheel once we have our other sample ready and we'll match up the color. All of these colors are different enough to my eye that I can actually see the difference and get a reading that I trust and for me is worth doing. So the test is pretty easy. 
we'll take uh, 10 drops, which is clearly labeled on the front of this. And then we'll swirl for 10 seconds and make sure that it's fully incorporated. And when we're done there, we're going to add two drops of the other solution. This one is pretty thick, so I like to make sure that it's nice and vertical when I put it in. And again, we'll swirl for about 10 seconds. It's going to take six minutes for the color to fully develop. So when you're done mixing it, just set it down and uh, come back six minutes later. And then we can uh, do our test. Okay, so it's been six minutes now. I'm going to take uh, our vial. I'll put it in the color comparison. And I'll spin the wheel until both of these look exactly the same. And for me, this is really easy. It's really obvious that I have a 0.04 parts per million uh, phosphate in the tank at the moment. Okay, enough of that. The checker is where it's at. I do agree that the Red Sea test kit is a step above the rest. However, I must be colorblind because I can't read any of the phosphate tests. In this case, it's either a digital readout or I'm simply not going to do it. All right, Reed. Let's go ahead and do the uh, checker phosphate test. All right, so we have our phosphate checker here ready to go. Take our sample water. Again, we'll put it in. It says C1. We'll push the button, and it will read the clarity of the solution for a few seconds. And then it will say C2. At that point, we'll take it out, and we'll add our reagent. This time, it's a bit of powder. I find it's easier to rip it across two sides to put it in. And we'll just dump it in. All right, and mix it for about 30 seconds. All right, so now that it's mixed, we'll put it back in the checker. And this time, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to hold the button down until a countdown starts up. And there's a three-minute countdown. At the end of three minutes, we'll have a digital readout of what our phosphate level is. All right, so it's been three minutes and our checker came out with 0.06, which is really close to our 0.04 that uh, I got on the Red Sea test kit. And frankly, it's so close that either one could probably be right. But I probably trust the mechanics of this thing better than I trust my eye on the color wheel. So really, the digital readout is really nice. All right, so to sum this all up, if we're going to take the time and effort to test for something, it's worth getting a reading that we trust. And I'm with Reed. At, if it's not easy, reliable, and affordable to do, I'm probably not going to do it. The Sallyford test kits really are what I've used through most of my reefing career, and I'd have no problem recommending those to basically anybody. However, if you can't already tell, I really like the new line of Red Sea test kits, and they are what most of us at Bulk Reef Supply are using currently. These HANA checkers really are nice, and digital readout is king. So if it fits in your budget, go for it. Sadly, they are only available in certain types of tests. However, I do know they're working on them, and I look forward to seeing more come out on the market. All right, so that wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to see more product demos like this one, Subscribe to our YouTube channel or newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.